Okay, this is the runner, uh, or the net runner, uh, beginner tournament. We're going to do Bioroid as runner versus Circus Fire. Um, there was a bit, slight problem earlier, uh, Bioroid disconnected. So, uh, I know their decks, they're running, uh, Bioroid's running Chaos Theory, Circus Fire is running NBN, the world is yours. Uh, as their decks, as their identities. And so we will see in just a second the cards each one is running. Um, yeah. I'm going to need to see their hand size. Other hand. Show me your hands. Uh, I didn't get to see their pre-mulligan hands. Okay, this hand is actually really, really good. Um, it's pretty decent. It's got, uh, three ice, which is always good, and then two Astro scripts, which, this is the best agenda in the game, uh, right now, so... Uh, the toolbox. A uh, Byro is running the toolbox. This costs nine. It's a console that costs nine. That is the reason uh, people don't like it very much in competitive play, just because it costs nine, which is actually a lot. Ooh! Circus is running. Circus Fire is running Anonymous Tip to draw three cards. It's uh, the corporation version of Diesel, but it is much, much worse than Diesel. It's because corporations like to draw cards much less frequently than runners do. Runners are always drawing cards. Corporation has to draw a card each turn. And it doesn't really want to draw very much more than that. Sometimes it doesn't even... Oh, yeah. Yes. It's hard for me to keep track of the chat and the uh, commentate on the same time. So you put Eli or Wall Sack on the hand. Wall Sack on the hand is not something I was expecting. Oh wait, anonymous tipped at the end of the turn. That is an awkward. I I would think that if you wanted an anonymous tip, you would do that before. Uh, but anyway, we have a Diesel coming up from the runner. New Angel City Hall could be good against NBN. I'm not sure though. Uh, you can pay two to prevent tag, and it's trashed whenever you. Uh, Steal an agenda. Uh, he played uh, R&D interface with modded, which is always fun. And he's also got Crescentius, which is a program. You can trash it to derez a program if you trash all that. If you broke all that program subroutines this turn, I believe it's this turn or this run. I'm not. I'm not sure one of those two. And he just played it. Interesting. He's not playing his magnum opus. Oh, now all the hedge funds. Two hedge funds is a lot of money early game for, uh, especially for, uh, NBN. NBN, the biggest weakness of NBN right now is their economy is not very good. This is their only real economy card. This and pop-up window are their only real economy cards. You can spend a credit, or you can spend a click to put three credits on it, and at the beginning of your turn, you take one of those credits off. It's sort of like a, a cheaper pad campaign, except you have to constantly put credits into it. Uh, we're doing some aggressive drawing with Circus Fire. I would really want to get out one of these economy assets and get it going before um, Byroy gets... Uh, Byroy had to click for credits so he could play his, his Magnum Opus. Uh, that's one of the things about Magnum Opus. It costs five to play, which means you often have to click for credits. Circus Fire might have an Ice Light deck. I'm not ex I'm not sure how many Ice he has, but he's only had two in... You know, oh, there's a... Oh, there's a Chimera. That is very, very good for uh, Circus right now. Chimera is really good in these sort of aggro rush decks where you're trying to score agendas very, very quickly. Um, in the last game, uh, we saw... I, I, Chimera wouldn't have been very good in the last game, except Circus just didn't pressure Byroid's uh, Chimera. 
uh, in this game, uh, Chimera is very useful. Uh, it's more useful when scoring five cost agendas, but you can play this Astro script and you can be relatively sure that they cannot get in there no matter what they have in their hand. They need a Crypsis or a Darwin or some sort of AI breaker to get in there guaranteed. Um, otherwise, they're much less likely to, to be able to get in. So it's actually relatively safe to place an Astro script here unless... Uh, Byroid thinks that, or unless Circus thinks that Byroid is running uh, inside job to bypass the Chimera. But he did the smart thing, he did the safe thing, he put, placed an Eli in front of the Chimera. So even if Byroid played an inside job, he would inside job and bypass the Eli, then run into the Chimera, and he couldn't actually uh, break it. So he would stop there. So this is some uh, smart play by Chimera, and we're playing the Toolbox. Oh my goodness. The Toolbox with no breakers out does actually nothing. <laughs> uh, ooh, a pop-up window. Oh, sorry. Uh, pop-up window is another pseudo-econ card. Whenever the runner encounters it, the corp gains the credit. And the runner has to pay a credit, or, and the subroutine is the runner must pay a credit or end the run. So, it it's a very very good card. It's cheap. It only costs zero. And yes, we're just going to score this Astro script. This is an Astro script, of course. Astro script pilot program. Uh, very, very good card. This is, right now, this is the best agenda in the game. Uh, just because you can score an Astro Script, then you can score another Astro Script using your Astro Script, and then you can score another Astro Script using that Astro Script, and then you can score <laughs> another agenda using that Astro Script. <laughs> and I've seen people win games. They just scored one Astro script and then scored the rest of their agendas out of hand using this Astro script counter using Astro script counters. Oh, and Circus drew a third Astro script. So this actually seems like it might be happening. You could just score Astro scripts after Astro scripts, and oh my goodness. See, this is the weakness of Chaos Theory, uh, especially since he didn't put any pressure early early game. He didn't run, and he didn't force uh, Circus to res any of these two ice. The Wall Static or the Chris, or Caduceus. I mean, the Caduceus is a bad example, sort of. But now he could, you know, run and put pressure on it. But, um, so since uh, Circus has all this money, he's free to do his own thing. He's free to advance and score agendas. And uh, Byroid really can't stop him. Uh, he's also Chaos Theory, and Chaos Theory is not very good at applying pressure without special cards, like, uh, you know, R&D Interface is one of the few cards that lets you, you apply pressure, but that's more late game pressure. Uh, he, uh, why would you advance that? That was an Astro script, and he just advanced it? This is, this is very rare that you advance a three-cost agenda that, you know, doesn't have an over-advancing bonus. Um, unless you're trying to trick the corp in thinking it's a June bug or something, there's no reason to advance it, because you can just score it in your next turn, regardless. Um, so he's probably just going to advance it twice, score it, and I, I would try to get some money by playing a pad campaign or something down. Uh, I'm not sure what Circus's plan is. Right now he has four agenda points and two Astro Script counters. This is very, very scary when you're, um... The runner. If when the corp has two Astro Script counters, they can just score like two more agendas out of hand and, and then you then you just lose. Um, especially when out of the world is yours, which is uh it, it can run almost exclusively uh three cost agendas. He just took a credit with his last action. The world is yours can run almost exclusively three two and three cost agendas. Uh, oof. This is the badness of the blind femme fatale. Caduceus 
But when you have Link, Caduceus is not a threat. This is the weakness of Caduceus. Uh, when you have Link, it actually does nothing. Um, well, it does something. It, the, the, it has a Trace 3 and a Trace 2, but if you have 2 Link, you can just get through that by nothing. Uh, so, Sir, so Byroid essentially wasted the Femme Fatale, and he sees it now. He essentially wasted the Femme Fatale uh, to bypass the Caduceus when he could just basically just walked through Caduceus with his Link. It would have actually been cheaper for him to get through it with his Link than to uh, bypass it with the uh, with Femme Fatale. Uh, well, with the toolbox or current credits, it changes things slightly. But it's still a very, very bad target, because you could also just break it with the Femme Fatale. If he had targeted this Chimera, if he knew this Chimera was here, he wouldn't need an AI Breaker for the Chimera, and he would just be able to get through. Or an Eli, or a Wall of Static, he could get through them. Um, this is why... Uh, you don't want to, you know, blind Femme Fatale. You don't want to use Femme Fatale on a uh, ice you don't know about. Um, usually, and also you want to run ice early on in the game, uh, to force the corporation to res their, those ice. Um, yeah, you, you want to force them to res them so you have more information, so you know what you want to play Femme Fatale on later on in the game. Uh, this is very important, you know, strategy for all the runners. All runners should be running whenever they have the, the chance. They, you, you cannot wait until you have Toolbox, Magnum Opus, and Femme Fatale before you even make your first run. <laughs> and we installed the, he installed the last Astro script. If he manages to score this Astro script, um, uh, this is a, this, this seems like a bad mo Oh, he's just going to use an Astro script counter. I was going to say, if he manages to score his Astro script without using one of these Astro script counters, he can, li he can literally score a five cost agenda. He can just play the five cost agenda out, advance it twice, and then use three Astro script counters to score it. <laughs> Which, I I've never seen that happen, but, I mean, that's one of the drawbacks of, that's one of the powers of Astro script. I mean, at that point, it's kind of redundant, but... Oh, uh, and now Byroy is doing the smart thing, and he sees that uh, R&D is open, and he can just hammer R&D essentially for free. So he's just going to run R&D every turn. Uh, he only gets to see essentially one new card, um, but he can prevent Circus from drawing any more agendas uh, until, uh, you know... He, in, until Circus does something and, and plugs this leak, basically, with more ice. So I think that's a smart move for, Bio, for uh, yeah, Bioroid 86 to do. Circus Fire needs more economy. He also needs to play some more ice here. But he doesn't have any good ice to play. Just pop-up windows. Um... Or he could just aggressively draw and try to find an agenda that he could score from hand and win that way. Um, that, that's a little bit more risky than trying to plug this hole, but it might be the best move because he's already winning. By, he's already at six points to Bioroid zero. So if he just drew a bunch of cards, hoping to find another three-cost agenda and hoping that Bio, Bioroid couldn't steal it from his hand, then he could you know just win the game. He's going to play a, a pop-up window and take a, a, a slightly more safe approach. Um, I, I would really install a pad campaign here uh, behind, in your server, your remote server, just to tr try and make some more money over time. You're not going to need this remote server anymore with you know two Astro Script counters, so I would just make him do that. So I would just use use the server to makes money. So this pop-up window makes the um, uh, pad... Yeah, this this pop-up window makes the running R&D every turn much, much worse. Because he's giving uh, Circus credits every time he runs R&D now. 
and he also has to pay a, a credit to access R&D. It's not, it's not the worst trade in the world, but still, still pretty bad for, uh, for Bioroid. Uh, you need to gain a credit. A credit. Okay, he just did that manually. Uh, I mean, yeah, Bioroid can still do this until the end of the game. He can still just keep running every single turn, which is not actually a terrible idea. Um, really, Circus can't afford to keep him out at this point. That He doesn't have any ice that can actually keep him out. Caduceus does very, very little when the toolbox is providing two link. Um... Pop-up window is actually his best card. Really, Bioroid trashed the Sand Sand. I'm not sure I like that play. Yeah, he got he got rid of the Sand Sand, but Sand Sand is basically a dead card when you have two Astro Scripts in play, and also and it costs five to trash. I mean, Magnum Opus does make that a little less, but. Oh, uh, he's trying to access another card. I, he's spending a lot of money seeing one new card, which, again, I'm not really sure it's worth it. Because he's giving uh, Circus a credit, and he's uh, gaining, and he's losing a credit. He's losing uh, three credits on this run to see one new card. I mean, it's, it's not a terrible move, but we have R&D interface out. I would expect him to be able to do much, much better. It's so not Circus Fire's turn. Oh, Wall of Static. Uh, since uh, Bioroid has a Corroder out, this Wall of Static is not as good as it seems because it doesn't actually stop uh, Bioroid from running. But it does cost him an additional two credits every time he wants to run that server. So he, he plays this on R&D. It makes R&D much more expensive for Bioroid to keep running. He can still keep doing it because that's the power of Magnum Opus. But he would basically be devoting his entire turn to just running uh, this and giving Circus a credit. Um, if I were Circus Fire, I would really be drawing a lot right now. I would just draw, 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 draw. Or, alternatively, I would play a pad campaign and a couple more ice. Maybe a, a wall stack and a uh, pop-up window. And I would just draw, 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 draw. This is an odd, odd move. He played Chimera on HQ, and, and he drew two cards. Um, yeah, I don't like Chimera on HQ. Uh, it's really only good against the Count Siphon. You can res the Chimera when they play the Count Siphon, and then ideally they don't have a way to break it. They don't have three breakers or, or, it's, or an AI breaker, and so you just, you know, stop them, make them waste an account Siphon. But I... <laughs> I, I still I still don't feel like it's that that fantastic. Why is he running archives? Why is Bioroy running archives? There's no way Circus Fire discard an agenda. He could score any agenda right now and he doesn't he's not going to discard any agendas. He just discarded a bunch a couple useless ice. Oh he discarded Sand Sand and a Draco, which our pad campaign in a Draco. Interesting? I'm not sure why he's not trying to use the passive economy of a uh, pad campaign to, to generate credits. Um, so you can install more ice and potentially protect the server a little bit better. Yeah, this is this server is costing him one credit a turn to get through. It's not not that big of a deal. If I were Byroid, I'd be running this every turn. I'd be very happy. 
if I were Circus, I would either play the pad campaign and dedicate myself to defending this server, or I would just spend all my clicks each turn drawing until I found an agenda I could score, score the agenda, and win the game. Um, and there's a Project Bail, that Beal, if... Okay, I don't like doing these hypotheticals, but if... Uh, instead of playing this Chimera, he would have drawn. He would have drawn the Project Beal. He probably would have been safe in his hand, and he could have scored it. This turn won the game. Right now, he... The, you know, I, I mean, you, you can't really anticipate that. That's sort of a bad thing. I don't like doing that, but, I mean, it is true. There's the Project Beal. If this Beal stays safe, then uh, Circus has won the game. So if he stay, keeps in his hand, I would install a pad campaign or marked accounts in uh, this remote server here. Uh, just to give another target to run. Uh, just to time, sort of waste Byroid's time. Because the only way Byroid's going to win is to run, 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 R&D or HQ. Um, he kind of needs to get lucky to win at this point. Uh, if you can waste some of his time, waste a click running a card that doesn't matter, then, you know, it, you're going to have to discard anyway. Money doesn't really matter at this point, so... Because he only needs one credit to score this because he has two Astroscript counters. Um, and so on his next turn, he could actually just take a credit, install this, advance it once, and then score it and win. So he doesn't need credits, so he shouldn't have taken a credit there. I think he should have installed the card... Uh, on the server, or install a pop-up window on HQ or R and D. Um, I think the I, I don't I don't like the taking credit there. Uh, it looks like Circus is going to win this game, and if I'm correct, that means if uh, Byroid doesn't steal this Beal or another agenda from R and D. Then it's going to be a tie game between or a tie match between Byroid and Circus because last game Circus scored two points before the end of the game. So if Byroid doesn't get the get this R and D run and doesn't steal this uh, Beal, then uh, it, it's the then that's a tie game a tie match. Which I'm not sure how how is scoring the scoring works in this beginner tournament, so it should be interesting to see. Um, I feel like Circus got very lucky this game. Uh, not not to criticize his play at all, because I think his play was actually fairly solid, um, but. He he got the three. He drew three Aster scripts. That is absol actually huge. And um, Byroid messed up by not running uh, HQ or R and D early. He didn't run until he had played Magnum Opus, uh, Toolbox, and Femme Fatale and R and D interface. That is uh, you know nine. That's eighteen. Uh, 23, 27 credits worth of cards before you even start running. Um, you really can't do that. Um, as the runner, you have to, have to, have to, have to run more, more often. You have to run more often than that. You have to run from the very first turn of the game. Uh, and you have to run as often as you can up until the very last turn of the game. Uh, obviously, Shaper, Chaos Theory, uh, Dex, and the Shaper faction operates a little bit differently from that. Um, but you still have to run early on in the game. You have to put pressure on the Corp, make the Corp spend money. And, uh, you know, th then he wouldn't have been able to score these uh, these Astro Scripts if he didn't have any money. If he had been, had to res these ice, he wouldn't have been able to score those uh, Astros early. So that was a very good game for for both of those players. Um, I, I I hope that um, you know they can look back and and see how how they could have played the game better. Uh, yeah, thanks for the match. Was fun watching.
Um, so yeah, uh, that that is my video. Um, th thank you guys for watching. I hope that uh, Circus and Bioroid can watch these videos and see a little bit more about uh, how how the, how the game how uh how, how they can play a little bit better uh, i hope this is a good learning experience for all of you so see you next time